In a life or death struggle, we must be prepared to act quickly. The slightest delay can be fatal. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of terror, bravery, and teamwork on Rescue 911. We begin on the afternoon of December 2nd, 1990, on Lake Monroe in Sanford, Florida, as hundreds of sailboats were taking part in the largest inland boat race in America. Throughout the two-day event, more than 650 boats competed in a series of races held on six different areas of the lake. On race course number four, a triangular-shaped course covering roughly four square miles, Dave Backus and his crew, his wife Laura and a good friend, were finding the competition intense. We were just trying to get around the course and finish in good grace and style because we were at that time our second to last in the final race. sailed into what you and I would describe as a lull. There was just very little air. Our sails went very limp. Their friend Guy Atkins had never competed in a big race before. On that day, he was responsible for the spinnaker pole, which controls the front sail. Guy had gone out the week before, but uh, we hadn't really been together that many times like you should be in a hardcore racing boat because he doesn't sail as much as I do. He stepped up on the deck to physically move the pole. David, my husband, was controlling the tiller. I was controlling the ropes uh, that fly the spinnaker. take a little swim here and then we're gonna raise it back up real quick and empty the water out of it and sail home. Why, what are you doing? Get away from the boat. I can't. Get out from under the sail. My foot's caught. Let me come over. Come Guy had his leg trapped but he was fine. You know the water was below his shoulders. He was in his life jacket. Doc is caught on. Yeah. You know I was ready to cut lines whatever but uh, it's very murky. It's hard to see. We weren't having any luck. The air pockets in the hull began to fill up. We began to sink just by inches. I swim out to the end of my mast, and I put my life jacket on the end of the mast so that the boat won't completely turn over. We don't want to turtle the boat. Ah! As I repeatedly dive, you could just see the cables. He's caught between the two thickest steel cables on my boat that hold up my mast. These cables normally are extremely taut. They're not going to uh, wiggle more than an inch either way. Help! Help! Help Susan McCann was sailing with her fiancé when she saw they were in trouble. At that point, I didn't see the trapped man. So I don't know what the problem was. Uh, maybe they couldn't swim. They said, if this boat turtles, we have a drowning here. Word of the situation was quickly passed to the chase boats. A powerboat, skippered by Bill Snyder, came to assist. As I approached the boat there, his head was just barely out of the water. Every time a big wave came over, it's just kind of hitting him in the face, and he's, you know, taking in some water, choking a little bit. The guy at that point stopped talking and he was not panicking or anything but he just seemed kind of in his own world all squadron vessels all squadron vessels this is a ship obsession does anyone have any wire cutters we need some wire cutters over here in course four we got a guy trapped in a sailboat over here we need cutting three you lifting it off yeah. <laughs> ah! guy yelled out, you know, what are you doing? That hurts. Stop it. And when the boat came up and then we brought it back down again with the chop of other boats coming in to help, the boat was sinking down some more. He began to go under just inches below the surface. 
It was the most frightening experience I have ever had. I tried to get a grip under his arms just so that he would feel like there was someone there with him, but I could not pull him up. You know, we were just in a situation that even though I would have done anything I could have, there was nothing that I could do before he died. When we continue, there were people clustered on the bow of the first chase boat, screaming to get his foot out of there, and some guy was screaming, break his foot, break his foot. It was crazy. We have a man trapped over here and drowning. We need help. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Bill, I'm on my way. This is number one bug. But the worst part was, uh, you know, watching his hands above his head. They were splashing, and they slowed down, and... And then I could tell he wasn't moving his hands, that, that, but the waves were making his hands float. He's been a friend for a long time. We had taken him on the sailing weekend and encouraged him to come with us and how much fun it would be, and, you know, this is the way it ends. There were people clustered on the bow of the first chase boat, screaming to get his foot out of there, and some guy was screaming, break his foot, break his foot. It, it was crazy. By this point, they had pulled him up, and I think the skipper was keeping his head out of the water while he tried some rescue breathing. John Huffer had arrived with a pair of wire cutters. I was concentrating 100% on just cutting that wire. I grabbed the two sprouts that were holding his leg, pulled them enough apart. The last thing that was holding him in the rigging was this humongous tennis shoe. So I unlaced his shoe and pulled it off, and then put my shoulder against his foot and pushed for everything I was worth, and his foot popped loose, and I heard things snapping and popping, and I was sure I'd broken it in about a dozen places. On the other hand, I didn't think he'd mind. I guess if I had to think about what a dead person looked like, he looked like he was gone. Push, Daddy, push, push. Okay. Sailing instructor Kai Svensson and Steve Sweetie were both trained in CPR. I came forward on the boat. If there was a pulse, I couldn't feel it. He and I sort of touched, you know, with eye contact. I did the chest compressions, and he did the mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. And this having been a new experience for me, I wasn't sure. You know, I figured we'd just bump on him and, until we got there and hope for the best. We're doing CPR on this guy, and there's no room on the bow of this boat. His feet are dangling in space in front of the boat and we're doing maybe 35, 40 knots in, in foot and a half waves, holding on for our lives, working on this guy. We're soaked, it's freezing. It was an incredible ride. We're coming in with a man on the boat. We're gonna bring you to the East Station and the rescue people there. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. We were probably about halfway across the lake when we, we stopped in the water. Basically, the guys that were doing say, I can't tell whether he's got any pulse or not. Yeah, he's, going, he's coming. He's coming. I felt the first pulse that I felt. And we could hear breathing. I was truly amazed. He's got a pulse. He's breathing. Don't push him no more, man. An overwhelming feeling of, of uh, joy and relief came over me. He was still cold and blue, and we closed his eyelids. And we brought him into the marina this way. And I have to hand it to the driver. He, without any concern for his boat, just put it up on the ramp. And we handed him right over the bow, and Zippy was gone. Thirty-four-year-old Guy Atkins was transported to a nearby hospital for treatment. After five days, he was released, to the great relief of all those who worked to save him. It is, in my opinion, 
uh, one of the higher privileges of mankind to be able to save the life of another human being. I'm amazed he's walking around today. I'll never forget what he looks like, though. At least wet. To each of them, I owe them my life. The only scars I have are a few scars on my leg. We had been married nine months, and then he had the accident. And my first year of marriage was extremely exciting, but I can deal without that much excitement for the rest of my life. So I'm hoping for continued calm waters. <laughs> Did we win that race? <laughs> there are certain preparations that are probably essential. One of those is learning how to do CPR. Without CPR, I would have been dead on December the 2nd. I don't know if I'm here for any special purpose. I'm just glad that I have the opportunity now to see how my life will turn out.